a new model from Microsoft, which is just 1.3 billion parameter model, manages to beat Llama to 7 billion parameter model across a lot of benchmarks. And this model is called Phi. It's a very popular concept called textbooks are all you need. And it is based on this particular concept. And this model is actually crushing Llama to 7 billion parameter model in multi-step reasoning benchmarks. Forget about benchmarks. The fact that this model exists and the model is uh, working fine is a testament to the kind of quality of data set that is required to build these large language models. Let's get into the video and learn more about this model and what this model's magical secret recipe is. Textbooks are all you need part two. It's a new paper from Microsoft uh, that describes the model 5 1.5, which is also something that they have open source. The model weights are available on Hugging Face Model Hub for you to use it. This model is not fine tuned. This model is not RLHF. It comes up with a research license that you can directly go ahead and then use it for research purposes. The reason why this model is quite interesting and quite exciting is because without instruction fine tuning, without RLHF, without fancy data set, like it's not a huge data set, still this model is managed to perform really good. It's a 1.5, 1.3 billion parameter model that does really good with Python coding performance close to the state of the art under three different sections. Common sense reasoning is one section where you have got like the basic um, benchmarks, language understanding and knowledge. The most important thing is multi-step reasoning. Especially if you see inside multi-step reasoning, which is like you ask a model and then have multi-step reasoning, 5.1.5 and 5.1.5 web model crushes, like completely crushes Llama to 7 billion parameter model and uh, does a lot better than Llama 7 billion parameter model. The fact that a 1.3 billion parameter model does a lot better than 7 billion parameter model is quite amazing. And it is not with multi-step reasoning alone. Even if you see common sense reasoning, there are a lot of benchmarks where 5 1.3 billion parameter model and the web version of it does better than the existing models or at least on par with the 7 billion parameter model. Imagine like you've got a 7 billion parameter model and you've got like 1.3 billion parameter model and they are like quite similar in terms of performance is quite unbelievably amazing. This model, this benchmark is compared with Vikuna, Falcon, uh, Llama 2 and Llama and multiple other these models. And even across these benchmarks, it is doing good thanks to a principle called textbooks are all you need. So what does this concept called textbooks are all you need is the foundation of the first paper that they released textbooks are all you need. And this paper actually basically this model builds on top of that particular concept, which is to prepare the data set in a format that textbooks exist. Like if you have got used textbooks, like if you have gone to the schools, like you would have like an exercise and answer in your textbook. And these people, these researchers from Microsoft managed to prepare the data set in such a way that, and when I say prepare the data set, at this point, you would know that these Microsoft researchers synthetically prepared this data set. It is not a, like a real data set that is available on the internet. So they synthetically prepared this data set. So that's what they're saying. Moreover, our data set consists almost exclusively of synthetically generated data, closely following the approach from the more paper that they are referring to, which has more important implications for the potential. So even if you see the other section where they're talking about the usage of the model, you can see that we tentatively attribute these abilities to the exercise and answers that can be found in our synthetically generated textbooks. So the reason why this model is performing good is not luck, not fluke, not some uh, random chance that Microsoft researchers, these researchers managed to curate the synthetically generated data in such a way that this model has a very high input. The input of this model is of very high quality, highly curated, synthetically generated data set from various experts, various domains. And this, that as a matter of fact that this model, even with the lesser amount of tokens, the training tokens, even with the lesser amount of data set, this model has performed really good and better than the 7 billion parameter model. This in fact tells us two things. One, the input data set is very, very important. I can understand. But the fact that, you know, the gap between 1.3 billion parameters, 7 billion parameter is huge. Uh, that is a great thing to learn. Okay, benchmarks is one thing. Let's look at the examples of how 5 1.5 is actually doing in terms of certain questions. I'm definitely planning to try out this model. But if you see the questions that they put it on the paper. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to give a scenario that is unexpected, a premise. 
Sebastian is in London. It's the middle of July, yet it is raining. So Sebastian is feeling gloomy. He. Remember, this is a next word prediction model. This is not an instruct fine tune model. So premise is here is that rain in July is uncommon. It's an unexpected premise. And despite that, this model has performed really good. For example, it says been looking forward to this trip for months. He's been trying to stay positive, but it has been difficult. So it managed to understand that this is an unexpected premise and it managed to generate a coherent story. So even when the model has not seen or not seen this kind of premise, an unexpected premise, the model managed to adapt well and then created a coherent story, which is quite amazing. Now let's go to a very popular prompt engineering technique, which is called chain of thought prompting. So we can say, tell the model to think step by step. So that will give this model an opportunity to think step by step. But again, this proves the quality of the data set that they've used and the amount of learning that the model has gone through. Suppose allies originally had three apples, then Bob gives allies seven apples, then allies gave cook five apples, and then Tim gave allies three amount of apples allies had. How many apples does allies have now? It's a question and you just tell the model to think step by step. But the fact that you said think step by step manage or triggered the model to think step by step thanks to the fine uh, training data that they had and the model managed to answer. And this is not just like one off question and answer. There are multiple questions starting from the general reasoning to programming question and even a question and answer. Like even though this is a next word prediction model, you can put your prompt, you can make your prompt in such a way that you can ask this model to answer your question. You can use it for next word prediction as well. And you can use it to do, let's say, chain of thought, like with think step by step. And then you can ask question and answering from this model by asking the model to give you step by step answers as well. And it is all how you craft this prompt and this model is able to perform really well and adapt really well for the kind of prompt that you give and the kind of answer that it gives you. And across the field, like whether it is question and answer, um, programming questions, technical questions, it does a pretty good job. In fact, like it manages to generate like social media tweets as well by the question that you give. You can just simply say, write a Twitter post for the discovery of gravitational wave and just simply say a Twitter post and colon, it manages to generate the post in itself. I don't know how much it respected the text completion, like the quantity of the text, but it still does a really good job with um, hashtags and all these kind of things, including the programming question. It does a pretty good job. Let's look at some numbers, especially the multi-step reasoning benchmark that we all thought that this is crushing. If you look at that particular benchmark, you would see the models that they have competed with. They've competed with a bunch of models across like three uh, benchmarks, GSM 8K, Human Evil, MBBP, MBPP. So they've got this, all these things. And obviously like on the GSM 8K, Llama 65 billion parameter model is quite at the top. Even um, you would see like Llama 65 billion doing good with MBBP and even on human evil, it is 23.7. It's a good score. But now when you just come down on this particular table, you would see stunningly, surprisingly that phi 1.5 billion parameter model or 1.3 billion parameter model with the web version, the extended web version has scored 41 on human evil. Like, it's quite unbelievable. If you see GSM 8K, um, it is still like, Llama 65 billion is 50 and uh, Phi 1.5, the base raw model is 40. It's still a much, much greater score. Like imagine you're comparing a 1.3 billion parameter model with a 65 billion parameter model. And especially if you see the human evil, which is like quite a popular benchmark, a lot of people use 65 billion parameter came with 23 points. And this is completely unbelievable. I think the biggest lesson for me from this particular paper is the scale. The scale of the differences of the smaller model and the bigger model and the kind of things that it can learn. For example, it can learn, it managed to learn, think step by step, primarily from the data that we gave for training. And um, also it is doing a good, or let's say a rudimentary in context learning just from the data. There is no fine tuning. There is no supervised fine tuning or instruct fine tuning. There is no RLHF to tell the model how to respond back. But despite all these differences or despite all these not being available, just because we had got in a good textbooks or all you need approach data set that has recent, um, that has helped the model do well in terms of the reasoning, uh, especially the multi-step reasoning and the language understanding and the common sense understanding. 
I think this is once again a big testament to what we say Gigo, garbage in and garbage out. You put garbage into any model, you can expect a garbage to come out. And it also makes a point about how much importance a pre-trained model's data set plays rather than any fine tuning that can happen. So I would definitely look forward to see more fine tuned models from this and then see how those models perform and how much better it performs than this. But I'm looking forward to try this model in the first place. This model is a very simple model. It is already integrated with the Hugging Face model uh, transformer. So it's very easy for you to try. The training time took eight days, just 32 A140 gig memory GPU, eight days, imagine eight days, 150 billion tokens and uh, data set size is 30 billion. It's a next word prediction model and it does a pretty good job for what it does. The 5.1.5 is quite an amazing model that has been released with research license. It is already available for you to use. I'm definitely looking forward to try out this model and then see how the model performs in some of the tests that we do. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, I would love to hear your opinion about what do you think about a small model ruling a big model? I mean, this is almost like a David versus Goliath. The only difference here in this particular case is this is a synthetically generated data. And uh, let's see what the world looks like with synthetically generated large language models in the future. See you in another video. Peace.